I always add some kind of red element to my greens as well, whether this be a bit of cadmium red or some alizarine crimson. And then I can even shift the hue of the green by mixing in some phthalo green. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint a mountain landscape in acrylics. And I'm gonna give you some tips on mixing some of those low chroma mountain colors. I'm painting on a 10 inch by 12 inch linen panel which is acrylic primed and what I've done is I've toned it with a layer of burnt sienna. Now I usually paint with oils and only paint with acrylics from time to time. And when I paint in oils I normally paint on a white surface but in this case I wanted the warm underpainting to come through the paint layers so this is why I've toned it with burnt sienna. Now, if you're a beginner at painting, then I would suggest you paint on a white surface as although painting on a toned surface can really help warm up your painting, it can affect the tonality of your colors. And often with beginners, the darks can end up coming out too dark and people have trouble with the tonal values. So I would suggest if you're a beginner at painting, then paint on a white surface. But in this case, I'm painting on a toned surface. Now, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm painting my dark values and shadows first. So here in the distant mountain, it's a pretty big mountain, but even the shadows are starting to look a little lighter as it's quite far away. So I've used a mix here of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, titanium white, and a little alizarin crimson. Now the reason I paint the dark values and shadows first is because it makes it easier to paint the areas in light afterwards and the general rule is that we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground then as landforms recede darks are not as dark and lights are not as light. So by painting the dark value first we can quickly establish a tonal range in the painting and then it makes it much easier to paint the areas in light afterwards and get the saturation of the colours correct as well as so we can gauge them from the shadow areas in the painting. Now what I'm doing here is I'm painting the cloud shadows and I'm actually using the same colors that I've just used for these mountain shadows but there's a lot more titanium white in the mix. Now this is going to help to provide color harmony in the painting meaning that the painting will look harmonious and read well to the viewer and this is because I'll be using common colors throughout the painting. Also, I've been using burnt sienna in the mix and there's that burnt sienna underpainting as well. Now with this acrylic painting, I'm purposefully going for loose brushwork here and making it more impressionistic. Also allowing some of the burnt sienna underpainting to come through as well. So it's just gonna warm up the whole painting. The brushes I'm using are mainly number five synthetic flat brushes. These are called Shiraz brushes and they're made by Rosemary & Co. And if you want to get some Rosemary & Co brushes, I'll put a link in the description box below. Now the darkest values in this painting are the trees here that are on the left side. And to start with, I've just used a mix of ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. Now when you combine these two colors, you can create a near black and that's because burnt sienna is actually a dark orange and actually you can see it's an orange just from the underpainting here that I've applied to this linen panel. Now that all my shadows are established I'm starting to paint the areas in light and I'm just working backwards starting with the sky and just painting the cloud highlights. Then the next thing to do was to paint the sky itself using a mix of ultramarine blue with a little phthalo green and titanium white. Now the colours I'm using in this painting includes titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue and phthalo green and these are the same colours that I use when I paint in oils. I reckon this is a really versatile palette to use, there's not too many colours on it so it's relatively simple and I believe you can paint any landscapes with these colours. So what I'm doing here is I'm just filling the negative spaces around the clouds using broad gestural brush marks with my number five flat Shiraz brush. Another thing with skies is making vertical downwards brush marks implies texture and gives the sky a lot more texture to it. 
Also, I'm increasing the saturation a little bit by adding some more ultramarine blue and just making the upper part of the sky a little bit darker as well. So next I'm painting the areas of the mountain that's in full sunlight. And there's lots of pale low chroma colours here, mostly yellows and very, very subtle greens. I'm using a mix of yellow ochre, titanium white, a little alizarin crimson, a little burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'm just mixing the colours in varying amounts just to create some different tones and creating also lots of different textures with my flat brush. Now this mountain is called Walter Peak and it's located near Queenstown in southern New Zealand. When you go to Queenstown you can see it across from the lake and it's really prominent and recognisable. So I've painted this mountain a few times. Now when we're painting mountains such as this one it's really important that we keep our colours low in chroma or saturation. In southern New Zealand these types of mountains have lots of this straw coloured grass growing on it called tussock grass and it looks pretty pale especially in winter. You also get lots of rusty tones in there as well as really low chroma greens. So I'm just adding these brush marks and creating different textures. Now one thing to consider when you're painting with acrylics is that the colours tend to dry darker than when you initially apply them. So this is something that I take into consideration when I'm painting my lights and darks. Now that the mountain is well underway, I paint the base of the second mountain that's on the left side of the painting. This is only just coming into view and in real life it's actually even higher than Walter Peak. And this mountain is called Cecil Peak. This is another really prominent mountain that you can see from the lakefront in Queenstown. Now there's still a lot of work to do on the mountain but I'm just going to leave it for the moment and work on the lake in the foreground. So here I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue with a little phthalo green, some yellow ochre and titanium white and again I'm just varying up the quantities of these colours that I'm using. So when I'm mixing them on the palette I'm not mixing the colours together thoroughly, in fact I'm using broken colour here so some of those individual hues from the paint come through and you can see it on my paintbrush there. So I've got some lighter tones and then perhaps I'll add some more ultramarine blue and make them a bit darker. Perhaps I'll create another mix with a little bit more phthalo green. I'm just creating some variation in the colours and tones in the water here. The lake is an inland lake, it's called Lake Wakatipu and it can get pretty choppy when the wind is blowing. So I wanted to create some movement and aliveness within the water. And to start with I'm just using horizontal gestural brush marks with my number 5 Shiraz flat brush. I'm also allowing that burnt sienna underpainting to come through. Now I hope you're enjoying the video so far, but can I ask you something? Are you struggling with your paintings? Do your landscape paintings look flat or are you having difficulty with composition, getting those tonal values correct or even mixing the colours? Well, I can help you with this. I've been there myself where I've just been struggling with my paintings and just floundering and in the end I got some help, an art mentor and it really helped me with my painting. My paintings very quickly improved. So I'd like to help you with your paintings and to do this I'm giving away some free full length painting tutorial videos. So these are landscape painting tutorial videos including this full video of how to paint this landscape of Milford Sound which is located in southern New Zealand. As I say I'm giving this all away for free. All you need to do is just click the link in the description box below. Now then I carried on adding more layers to the water with some darker tones in there, still using ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, phthalo green and titanium white. But then next I moved on to these trees that are on the left side of the painting and reinforced some of these shadows that are in there already, this time using a mix of ultramarine blue with a little yellow ochre. And then starting to paint some of these small trees and bushes that are on the banks of the lake. Now, as I'm using acrylic paint here, I can take advantage of the fact that it dries super quickly. So this layer 
the initial shadow layer was dry already. But in doing that, I decided that it needed a few more layers of shadow mix on top of that, just to create some reflected light in the shadow areas of this mountain. I'm also taking into consideration that the paint is gonna dry darker as well. So now that I have my shadow mix, the next thing I do is I paint some of the shadows in the sunlit side of the mountain. So this is just to create the suggestion of ridges and exposed rock faces that are in the shadow of the sun. Again, you can see when I paint it that it's a little bit lighter, but you will soon see that it darkens up as time passes. Now at this point, I was using a slightly smaller brush, a mix of number three filbert and flat brushes. Again, these are also synthetic Shiraz brushes. What I'm doing here is I'm adding now some lighter tones to the sunlit area of the mountain. I'm still using the same combination of colours that I was using just a moment ago. So if you remember, this was a mix of yellow ochre, some burnt sienna, titanium white, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. Now I use ultramarine blue in the mix for some of those slightly darker tones. And the ultramarine blue also helps to desaturate the colour, especially when it's applied with alizarin crimson, because alizarin crimson is actually a violet. And even when you combine those two colours, you're going to get a violet, and violet is opposite to yellow on the colour wheel. So all up, I'm making lots of different tones here with these four colours, but mainly the mix is on the yellow side. Now the next thing to do here was to start painting the suggestion of the snow that's at the top of the mountain. So painting the shadow side first. And the colours here are pretty much similar to the shadow colours, only there's a lot more ultramarine blue and titanium white in the mix and perhaps a little less burnt sienna. Now as I said before, with burnt sienna being a dark orange, it's helping to desaturate the blue. Once the shadow areas of the snow has been painted, I then painted the areas of the snow that's in the full sunlight on the sunlit side of the mountain. Now for this, I'm using titanium white, but I'm darkening the mixture just a little bit by adding in some of the shadow mix that I was using for the shadow side of the mountain. So by darkening the snow here, it means I can add more depth to it when it comes to finishing the painting, where I will be adding my lightest values, which will just be titanium white with a little yellow ochre, but this is gonna come at the end of the painting. Now here I'm adding more color to the trees, painting the areas of the trees that are in the full light. Now these are conifer trees, so they're pretty dark in value. And in fact, in general, trees are some of the darkest values to be found in the landscape. That's because there's a lot of occlusion shadows within them and often tree foliage is pretty dark. So I'm using combinations of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, also a little titanium white. I always add some kind of red element to my greens as well, whether this be a bit of cadmium red or some alizarin crimson. And then I can even shift the hue of the green by mixing in some phthalo green. And if I want to lighten the value, I'll mix in some titanium white. So I just added a few lighter layers again to the sunlit face of the mountain. And then the next thing to do was to paint the suggestion of a few white caps that are on the lake here, because when I took this reference photo that I've used for this painting, it was a pretty windy day, so the lake was choppy. So the lake almost, in some ways, looks a little bit like the sea, even though it's an inland lake. Now, the next thing I did with this lake is to add some lighter layers of paint to communicate some of the sky that the water is reflecting. So I was mainly using the same colors that I used in the sky, which is primarily a mix of ultramarine blue with some titanium white and a little phthalo green. Also keeping in mind again that the colors dry darker because I'm using acrylic paints. Now at this point in the painting I was just tidying up areas so for example just tidying up these clouds adding a bit more shadow mix adding some reflected light to the shadows in the side of the mountain and then just adding a few more details to the foliage of the trees and some of these small trees and bushes that are by the lake shore. I was also tidying up the forms of the trees and restating some of the dark valleys within them. 
Now next I was adding some more lighter value colour and a few little highlights to the sunlit area of the mountain. So again it's still that same colour combination, there's just a lot more titanium white in the mix and just overall I'm just tidying up some of these areas. I'm also adding some finer details to the snow. They look a little bit light as I apply them and they are slightly lighter in value than the initial layer that I put down. But I'm also taking into account that the snow is going to dry a little bit darker. At this point the painting was complete. I thought this was a real fun painting to create. I don't really often paint with acrylics so I was trying some things out. I did feel that whilst painting with acrylics it was better to just use super loose brushwork and allow that warm underpainting to come through. And you can really see it here in the clouds, the warm underpainting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.